What's up YouTube? Aida Beamer is back with another vlog today you guys and what we're going to be doing today you guys is something a little bit more unique than the standard ZL1 vlogs we've all seen on the car um, and there are plenty of them out there to be honest on YouTube now. What I'm going to be doing for you guys today is a uh, 13,000 mile review on the 2018 Camaro ZL1 and that is the case you guys. I've had the car for about nine months, nine months and maybe nine and a half months and the cars are ready. It's about 13,500 miles. Um, oh, as, as well as the 13,500 miles you guys in that small amount of time, we've also done eight track days at eight different road courses. So what I think this review will be kind of, what makes this review a little bit more unique, you guys are gonna be able to share more than just the standard kind of performance stuff. Um, and they just kind of run down the standard, you know, specs of the car and that kind of thing. I want to give you the kind of the, the skinny or the info, the inside info basically on what it is to like, what's, what it's like to own a 2018 Camaro ZL1 and to drive it like it's meant to be driven, meaning road course work and daily driving. This thing takes me to work every day. It's taken me to three different, um, three different states to do, uh, to do track time. Um, and some of these track, uh, some of the drives for the track work, we're talking, you know, easily four or 500 miles minimum uh, for most of the tracks. Um, we're talking about six, 700 miles round trip. So um, yeah, the thing's not a garage queen, you guys. It doesn't get babied um, other than its maintenance basically, but the car, meaning the car gets driven. It's not a, uh, it's not an East Coast car where it sits in the garage all winter, that kind of thing. I'm in Arizona, car gets plenty of action. All right, so again, the point of this review is to give you guys information as fans of the car, potential uh, buyers of the car, what it's like to own a car and how, what, what it's been like, how's it held up. And I will be honest, a big part of the, the reason I'm doing this review is because I'm coming from 10 years of Lexus and a life of owning pretty much just Japanese cars, you guys. And coming to Chevy, this is my first American car and this is my first uh, Chevy product. Very, very nice. <laughs> But uh, um, what I'm getting at basically is yes, we've all heard some of the horror stories in the past and I did not come to Chevy, you know, without my, you know, trepidations, maybe some, some mild kind of, you know, fear and anxiety basically. Um, but I have to say you guys, and this is one of the main reasons I'm making this video is to let you guys know after 13,500 miles and eight track days, the car has been rock solid. Now, every car will have its certain issues and I'm gonna kinda give you some information into, into some of those uh, uh, TSBs or any kind of mild issues I've had with the car. I'm also gonna go down through some of the maintenance, just kinda standard maintenance requirements for the car and how it's uh, held up. Um, and then we're gonna jump into some, some of the performance aspects of the car and then finally just kinda finish off kinda talking about uh, some of the infotainment of the car as well here, you guys. So, let's dive into the meat and potatoes, the TSBs, any kinda issues that I've had with the car now, as I mentioned in my other video, when I first bought the car, initially what I did was to jump on the ZL1 forums and find out from the 2017 owners what kind of issues they've been having with the car. Any new car is going to have teething problems. Um, it was not the first year of the 6th Gen Camaro, it was the second year, but the first year of the ZL1. That's why ideally I, I shied away from the 17s, I wanted to go with the 18 at least, just to make sure some of the teething problems have worked out. So, what were some of the problems with the uh, 2018 Camaro ZL1? The, uh, the first issue, and this is what I found on the forums, this, it's, it, I had the two issues. Within the first 1,500 miles to 2,000 miles, I had a, um, a, both of them from the front suspension, but I had a uh, high-pitched clicking noise from the front suspension, you guys, only when you would turn the steering wheel very hard, left or right, um, like basically the best example, the best way to describe it is if you're making a quick U-turn. When you're making a really, really hard turn, you get this click, 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 it's kind of loud, high-pitched noise. As soon as you straighten the wheel out, it stops. Um, so what they found out, um, or what I found out on the forum basically is there's a TSB for it. We get brake dust that collects between the mounting point of the wheel and tire and the, uh, um, and the wheel. Um, and that brake dust, when it collects back there, creates this high pitched uh, kind of clicking noise. So the TSB, it's a very, very simple fix, about probably like a 10 minute job. It just entails them removing the front tires. Um, they wipe all the contact surfaces down as well as the, uh, the, the brake surface as well. And then everything just the clicking just stops. So it's a very, very easy fix. Um, I found that the noise will return, but it returns maybe every, realistically, every six, 7,000 miles. And that's with constant, you know, the rotation of track work that I've done. Like I said, eight, eight track days, basically in about eight or nine months. So one a month, basically. So let's say every second track day, when you take it in for your oil change, if you do hear the noise, you just mention it to them. They take off the front wheels, clean it all off. Everything's nice and quiet. Now, the second issue I had you guys also within the first 2,000 miles, and it was also mentioned on the forum, so the 17 guys were having the same problems, but there is a TSB, so it is easily fixed, is a front knock, again, from the front suspension. Um, so if you go over any mild, uneven surfaces, 
uh, you're going down a driveway, something like that, you're going to get kind of a, a knock. Okay? It's not nothing annoying, but it's consistent and you know it's annoying. So it turns out that some of the um, the, the ZL1s, uh, when, they, when they were doing production on them, basically, they didn't torque the, uh, the front sway bar end links to the right torque setting. So what that resulted in was just a mild knock. So now there's two different situations. Either A, they tighten up the, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the end link bolts for you, or in my case, what was required was to actually just replace the end links altogether because the way I kind of discovered the noise was on a track day. So I think what it was is was the end link bolt was loose. And then when I kind of was, you know, working the track and doing the road course kind of thing, it kind of bent the, the, the opening open a little bit more. So even when the guys torqued it, the noise was still there because it was still loose. Now, those are the only two things that I've had. Um, like meaning issues that I've noticed taking them in, they know about the TSBs, they get them fixed. Now, there is another TSB on the 2018 ZL1. It, it just, it's a very simple thing. It entails uh, GM's requirement to shift the oil uh, from a five weight 30 and the GM just wants you to, they want it to, to go a little bit di slightly different. Basically, they're going to be shifting things over to a zero weight 40. And I believe it's just to kind of help, like I said, in colder, uh, colder environments for the car to kind of just reach its temperature a little bit easier to just protect the motor and cold starts a little bit better. Um, you know, like I said, I'm in Arizona, so it's not really a big thing. Um, one of the thing I did want to mention is that if you do track the ZL1 in the manual, it does recommend that you, uh, not recommend, it requires that you switch to a five weight 40 or a zero weight 40 uh, to protect the engine when it's when it's hotter, basically above, I believe, 230 degrees. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Now, in doing my research, I wanted to also share with you guys some of the uh, TSBs on the 2017. The 2017 has two TSBs that I know of. One of them is VIN specific, so it's only on a very small number, maybe a few hundred of the cars, but the transmissions were overfilled for the fluid, so on track, the temperatures would climb kind of quickly. Um, something very, very minor, no, no big deal, basically. And like I said, it was VIN specific, so just a few hundred cars. The second one, which is kind of cool, I like this, you guys, is, and my car doesn't have this, I have the newer springs, but um, with the ZL1 on the 2018, the car actually looks lower in the front than you have with the 2017, and they do use two, two different springs. So with the 17, if, if you're an owner of a 17, you take it in. If you mention that the spring height or the front height doesn't look correct or it looks too high, GM will lower your car for you, basically, you guys. That's pretty cool, man. So that's one of the other TSBs on the 17. Now that's pretty much it, you guys. I've had no issues with the car in, like I said, eight track days on eight different road courses across three states, uh, 13,500 miles now, I believe. Um, the car has been rock solid. And again, I'm coming from the Lexus side of the market. So the JDM stuff, always bragging about reliability and that's the big thing and performance and reliability and reliability, right? These things are supposed to be junk. Man, that's the furthest thing from the truth that I've found, you guys. Uh, and like I said, I know I'm not doing a 100,000 mile review, but for somebody to put 13,500 miles on a car in eight months, as well as eight track days, I think I've kind of put this thing to the test. And I'm glad to report that the car is rock solid, man. Very, very strong, very well built. Um, now, very simple stuff, you guys, basic stuff in terms of maintenance. The maintenance, the only thing I've done on this car is the, is the uh, oil changes that come every, with the track work, I probably do them every 4,000 miles. I do them a little bit early, as well as having everything set to the track settings. Now, Chevy has, has, has designed this car for track work, and if you're going to do track work on this thing, you need to have it set to the settings for the track. So the transmission has its own set uh, track setting, I believe, where they raise the fluid level. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it's also got its own requirements for the transmission, meaning you're supposed to change the transmission fluid. I think, um, I think it, after 15 hours of track work, uh, I haven't done that yet, but I, I haven't done 15 hours of track work with it yet, but I still did uh, the transmission flush, I think at about 2,000 miles. I also did the rear diff at, at 1,500 miles, which is also, um, or right after the first track, track day, which is also in the, in the manual as well. So again, if you're gonna track this thing, which again, it's built for it, you just need to basically follow the appropriate uh, maintenance schedule for it, you guys. And that's really cool that GM set that up for us. This thing is a beast. And that's the next thing I wanna get into is performance. What I, what I need to basically convey more than anything, you guys, I mean, 650 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque, it's got the 10-speed transmission, fourth generation magnetic ride, so it's got all of the hardware to kick ass. And not just kick ass, man, I'm telling you, you're killing the big dogs. You're going after the GT3s, you're chasing the GT2s, you're killing the old normally aspirated Ferraris, you're chasing down the, normally, or the, the new uh, boosted Ferraris. 
Gallardos. I mean, that's that's old. Any any old school supercar, last gen, it's dead. It's dead. Anything new gen, you're going to be all over it. You're not. I'm not going to say you're going to pass everything out there, but you're definitely going to be all over it. So the main thing about this car that I want everybody to know, you guys, it's not just powerful. It has a stupid amount of balance. Um, and what I mean by balance, I mean meaning you can take the car with as much power as it has to the absolute limit. The car doesn't let go. Um, I mean, look at some of the photos just to kind of give you guys an idea of some of the track work I've done and some of the cars I've played with. The car is extremely well balanced. That's my last car. Um, extremely well balanced at the limit with 650 horsepower. Um, and it's got all the massive modern technology and track technology that you're going to want. Um, you've got, I mean, even for drag racing, line lock. You've got custom launch control settings. You have the LT4, so it's more torque than you can shake a goddamn stick at, man. It's amazing. The 10R90 is transmission, which is 10 speed transmissions, which is actually faster than the Porsche PDK shifting first through fourth gear. It's absolutely insane. And then to match the power, again, to create more balance, you have these huge six piston Brembo brakes, front and back. Uh, front is going to be a four piston. The car never, never fades. There's never over any overheating for, from anything. Transmission doesn't overheat. The oil doesn't overheat. The car is cool as hell, even doing track days in Arizona. Um, it, it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Considering my, my Lexus ISF used to set off the transmission, oil, the transmission fluid temperature warning lights as, and the oil temperature warning lights when I would track in Arizona. It was ridiculous. Um, the other thing I like about the car too, again, and kind of indicating its focus, you guys, is the PTMS mixed with the Stabilitrack. It's absolutely amazing to maintain grip and power at full strength, and it doesn't feel intrusive. And that's what absolutely I love about this car, man, you, is when you look at the PDR video and you can kind of see that little white flash of the car. Um, what I do recommend by far, you guys, and I've learned this after eight track days, is don't run this car in Sport 1 on the track. It's just my opinion, because when you have Stabilitrack involved, it starts locking up wheels and the car starts to behave unnaturally. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel good. And in fact, in my case, and I've seen a couple other ZL1 videos where the owners have had an off because the, uh, the uh, front, uh, front wheels locked up. And I had the same thing happen to me at Chuck Walla. It wasn't a good feeling. Go full race or go uh, Sport 2. Never, never, uh, don't, I don't use Sport 1. Just, I wouldn't recommend it. I haven't tried the car full traction off and uh, even in race, it allows me to drift and it was a great time at Auto Club recently and I had, to, I had some fun drifting basically. But anyways, again, PTMS is amazing. Your brakes are amazing. Suspension is amazing. Engine's amazing. The, uh, the steering, it, it's still an electric system, you guys, but the weighting that they've dialed in, the way they've modulated the weighting, it's, it's excellent. The track, the track setting is perfect for track. It's a little heavy for street, especially if you're going to use one hand to drive. Sport setting is perfect for street because it allows you to drive with one hand and still kind of, you know, move briskly, kind of back and forth. I've used touring when you kind of get stupid on the street. It doesn't feel good at all. car feels kind of wishy-washy when you start pushing, basically, here. Um, one thing, just super quick, and I did mention it kind of briefly, you guys, is the 10R90 transmission and the new... Camaro ZL1, it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling, you guys. Honestly, even more, more, uh, more, or just as impressive, let's say, as the, as the engine in this thing, is the way this transmission shifts. It's so goddamn fast. Um, and in fact, like I said, the, uh, the, uh, the research will show, basically, that it's faster than Porsche's PDK for first, second, third, and fourth gear going up. I'd say I always tell people after fourth gear, the, the torque in this thing is going to take over, basically. So I'm not worried about splitting hairs on the gear shifts. Um, so again, focus, and it's focused for where you need it. Now, the last and final part, you guys, of the review that I wanted to get into, basically, <clears throat> I wanted to just mention some of the infotainment stuff that we've got in the car. The first thing I wanted to dive into, you guys, was the PDR. And a lot of, uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, if I think that the PDR is worth the, uh, the extra money. In my opinion, if you're going to be tracking the, uh, the Camaro ZL1, it's absolutely worth the money, you guys, because it, it's not just something for you to, for shits and giggles to kind of watch, you know, watch your video and share, which is fun. And they do make the file size nice and small, so it's super easy to upload and download and that kind of thing. But it's an effective teaching tool. That's what makes the thing really, really valuable. You're seeing all your braking inputs, steering inputs, everything is there. Uh, even, like I said, steering angle, braking, throttle. You've got the engine RPM. <clears throat> you know when the, uh, when the EDIF is kicking in or the traction control is kicking in. It's, it's an amazing, amazing tool. Now, slight drawbacks on the PDR, which are very, very minor, you guys, is the PDR video quality tops out at 720. So, eh, you know, every now and then, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a uh, GoPro, which I'm filming on now, versus the PDR, and I do every now and then, it's repetitive, but I will film with both every now and then. And when you compare, it's like, my God, man, the PDR video does not look, the quality is just way off compared 
to the uh, to the to the 1080 that you can get out of the GoPro. So it's it's one thing that's slightly wa lacking. The other thing I've noticed uh, is as well, you guys, the sound quality on the PDR is actually excellent, but not that great with the windows down. I'm not sure it's just microphone placement or whatever. But you know, obviously on a track day, you can't track with the windows um, with the windows uh, up. You have to have them down. So above 100, 120, you start getting a lot of that buffeting inside the car. Um, it is what it is basically. But again, it's an amazing teaching tool. It's awesome for shits and giggles. And the cool thing is you can watch it right in the car right after the session. So it's, it's awesome. You can check your track lap times, look at all the track uh, action. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun, you guys, a lot of fun. Now, the last and final thing I was gonna jump into you guys is the infotainment on the car. I have to mention the, uh, the Apple CarPlay, which I am in love with. Um, it, it, I, Lexus doesn't even have this thing yet, you guys. And again, I'm coming from Lexus. But I'm loving the Apple CarPlay. I love the, uh, the, the ability to kind of make the, the nav screen just directly my phone. It's got all my messages on it and all the other stuff, my music, everything. It's, it's super, super cool. The only drawback with the, uh, the Apple CarPlay is I don't like the fact that you have to plug it in. I wish there was some way that it could work uh, wirelessly. Um, the, uh, uh, the one thing also, too, I did want to mention is the car, and this is kind of cool that Chevy does this, you guys. The car has its own Wi-Fi. I mean, that's insane. I, I mean... <laughs> I know maybe I'm just more impressed because my last car was a 2010, but for, for, for a car to have its own Wi-Fi network inside the car that you can name, create your own password, I think that's super cool. And whenever you get in the car and you know, you're, using, you're using your music, you're taking music, you're, you're streaming music from anything, it just works really, really well. Um, the phone works anywhere. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's very, very cool option basically. And I know it's not something that every car manufacturer is producing in their car, but I wish they would honestly. It's, it's a very, very cool option and I enjoy that, absolutely. Um, the, the last and final thing you guys, and I know, um, it's kind of a stupid thing basically to mention, but, um, as I know that the fifth gen guys have had this on their ZL ones and there, there are some of the Camaros is the ability to start the car from outside. I think a lot of the cool thing about having a car like this, you guys, is just the way it sounds. So the cool thing is when you're walking up from work, let's say you, you had a long ass day you're walking up to the car, you walk up, you press your, um, your, your lock button, it's a little half circle. dig about that you guys is you get the ability to kind of walk up to the car number one in Arizona the car is going to be cooled let me go out here number one in Arizona the car is going to be cooled off and then number two as you approach the car you get that nice benefit of that super cool cold start man <laughs> it's super super cool man I really enjoy it and I have to say man just just aesthetically I am in love with the way this thing looks I have never had people respond to any car that I've ever had the way they do to this car it's, it's almost like you're, you're driving a modern local celebrity or local superhero, man. It's insane. People flip the fuck out when they see this car. Women, kids, men, I don't care. Um, I've had other cars that were nice, other performance cars, but I'm telling you, man, people flip the hell out on this car, which is super cool. It makes it more fun. It gives you a little bit more of that pride of ownership, which is a lot of fun. Now, the last and final thing, you guys, I did want to spread the, spread the word on you guys is the Chevy Camaro ZL1 2018 is rock solid for reliability. I know there's a lot of us out there who, who drive Japanese cars, German cars. You know, we would never consider an American car because, hey, I heard they're junk, they don't work, they break down, blah, blah, blah. And I want to tell you that, I, number one, I was one of those people. And I talked so much shit about Chevy and all American cars. And I'm telling you, man, I was a very harsh critic. And this thing, uh, critic, excuse me, and this thing still drew me in with its, with, 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 with its performance. I mean, how could it not? If you're looking for a real performance car, something that you can track, something you can be proud of, something that's going to kick the shit out of everything on the market, to be honest, you guys, um, I mean, this is it. And this is not just a performance bargain where you're going to give up a lot, of, a lot of other stuff, you know, reliability, luxury. It has it. I swear to God, I always tell people as a joke, the thing feels like a, feels like a Cadillac two-door CTSV, one of the old ones, but without the leather interior, honestly. It rides so smooth and so quiet, but I'm telling you, man, you hit that gas and God help you. It, it has a massive Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing and it drinks the gas and it turns into a fucking monster. It's insane. But anyways, you guys, like I said, I need to spread the word about the car. Like I said, it's, it's very reliable. It's a satisfying car to own. Um, super fun. And like I said, eight track days through Arizona, Nevada, California, not a single issue. And I also want to spread the word to you guys because one of the main things I was concerned about when I purchased the ZL1, well, I think I can turn it off. Sorry, you guys. Sorry about that. Well, the other thing I was, I was concerned about the ZL1, I was assuming that I would give up 
would be service quality. And I have to admit, yes, I went to one dealership locally. I'm not going to say their name on the video, man, but it was a, it was a nightmare. To get those end links replaced, it took me three visits, four visits. I'm even ashamed to say that shit. I ended up going to another dealership out of frustration. The, the quality of the, uh, the service at this dealership, and I'm, I'll say their name, it's San Chevrolet and Surprise. They, I swear to God, you guys, it's better than Lexus. So all I'm telling you is that if you are going to consider Chevy, know that some of the dealerships are hit and miss. So just check out their ratings online, that kind of thing. Talk to people who have been there before and you're going to know exactly what's up. And I promise you, you're going to be satisfied with this thing. It's insane. And for 65 to 70,000, and apparently now they're bringing the price down of the 1LE even down to 70, it, it, it's unbeatable. You cannot beat it. You cannot beat it. And it's not, again, it's not a big heavy random car you know it's not a drag car let's put like a hellcat which is still amazing those things are fucking awesome but again this is more of a road course car you still have that again that that beauty that pride of ownership it doesn't look cheese ball it's got the nice wheels um in my opinion it, it's 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 the last car that i'd ever owned that i thought that it would need anything for mods it does not need modifications i prefer balance not straight line power so anyways, for all you guys out there, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like the video, make sure you uh, subscribe and smash that like button. If you have some comments, leave them in the, uh, in the uh, comment section, you guys. But most of all, like I said, if you're out there shopping for a performance car and you're not sure about Chevy, and I'm telling you, I was there, this shit's the real deal, you guys. The only loser in the equation for not considering this car is us. And I, I'm telling you right now, that's my biggest, my biggest crime to myself was basically not looking further into American cars a little bit sooner. And I know it's more of recent that Chevy's kind of getting their, their game together, but I want to report very emphatically, they've got their, they've got their shit together, man. This thing is insane. So again, if you guys like the, uh, they like the video, go ahead and subscribe, smash that like button. Look forward to the next video guys. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, review. And again, if you're considering buying the ZL1, do yourself